Welcome back guys, you're with Michael at Trauma Companions. The other day I got asked an interesting question by one of my chaplains. They said to me, what if you're in the middle of a pastoral conversation and you know that you can help someone, you can, you've actually got the answer to something that's really on their mind, something that they're actually talking about. And so I said, okay, tell me more about what, you're, what you mean, what you're talking about. And they said to me, they were speaking to a man who was in great fear of being homeless. And she said he had just been evicted from a place while he'd been in hospital for the last month. He found out that he had no place to go to and he was really worried about being homeless. And she said, so I said to him, stop, stop, stop. It's OK. We have social workers here in the hospital They've got stakeholders in the community that can help with emergency housing. Please stop worrying about being homeless. We're going to make sure you have somewhere to go when you leave the hospital. And so she asked me, was that the right thing? Should I have done that? And I said, my thoughts on the matter is this. When I'm in the pit with someone, when someone's expressing something meaningful, at that time, I don't offer any solutions like you just gave an example of. And I said, I'll tell you a situation I had about a month ago. I was called to see a lady down in our older person's mental health ward. And this lady had just received a phone call from her boyfriend. And her boyfriend had said to the staff, tell Julie, let's call her Julie, tell Julie three things. One, I've got rid of all of her stuff. I've got rid of her dog and she's not welcome back here at all. So when she gets out of there, tell her not to waste her time coming back here. And of course, Julie was devastated by that. Julie was about 62 years old and she explained to me she had never been homeless in her life and it really, really was worrying her. And so we spent about 10 minutes just allowing Julie to share her feelings and thoughts about homelessness about how devastating it was that he got rid of her dog a companion she'd had for years and that all of her stuff had just been thrown out and and so I was with her for about 10 minutes listening to this and then she went quiet she went silent for about 30 seconds now I like the other chaplain already know that hey don't worry I've got social workers they can help with housing but I just kept quiet. And after about 30 seconds, Julie said to me, about 30 years ago, it was my daughter's 16th birthday party. I'd bought her a dress. We had booked a little hall down the road from us. When the day of her birthday came, I used heroin. And I used that much heroin. I didn't wake up until the next day. And I completely missed her party. She said, I learned later that after the party, two men had raped my daughter. She said, a year later, the day before her 17th birthday, her daughter committed suicide. And this woman sobbed, retelling this story, living with this regret. She sobbed in a way that I've rarely heard anyone cry. You see, if after hearing Julie's homelessness situation, I had just rushed in with an answer of, don't worry, we can help with that. Social workers can find emergency housing and we can work this out. Then Julie would not have had an opportunity to go deeper and share something even more painful, something she'd been carrying for 30 years. So my advice is this. In a pastoral conversation... If, in fact, someone's talking about something where you have a legitimate solution to their problem, just wait. When the pastoral conversation's finished, you can bring that up, like I did with Julie. After Julie had composed herself and thanked me for listening, I then said to her, Julie, we do have social workers that can help with emergency housing is that something you'd like me to organize for you and she said yes so you will still have the opportunity 
to help someone out like that, to make a referral to a, another stakeholder, another person who, who might be able to assist this person with you with. You'll, you'll have the time. But in the middle of the pastoral conversation, just hold back from that desire to quickly rush in like, you know, the white knight and say, I can help you. I can solve this problem because there'll be time for that. In the pit, we contain all of that stuff. In the pit, we're listening and understanding and conveying that. That's it. When the pastoral conversation is finished, then I can offer um, a possible referral or something like that. Okay. Thanks, guys. God bless.